Hi, Tara. Tara, can you hear me? Bob Stock, can you hear me? Hello. Can you hear me, guys? Hello. Can you hear me? I'm sorry. Okay, I was just saying, whilst I'll take a picture of uh, Giovanna's build, that we can oh. use it off. Oh, I have it here. Oh, okay, yeah, that's good. Take a, a big wide one. I have yeah, a wide one too. Specials. Do you want me to take you over to it, Wild Star? Okay, I'll take him over there. Drop it on the uh, email and I'll okay. use it. Brilliant, thank you. Hello, yes. <laughs> Keep them safe. <laughs> ah, hey, Max. <laughs> okay, Alva, do you want to come and join me? Let me. Um look at the map and we'll just jump over there. It's right by the cake. Uh, let's see here. Yeah. Right here, I think. Is Royal coming? going to be able to use voice or are you going to use text? Oh, I can oh, tell he looks he's fine. Okay. Mom well looks good with shaggy hair too. <laughs> yeah, he does. <laughs> on the wide seats if you can. Once you sit on the curvy seats it gets a bit crushed. Okay. So this is good? That's very good. Yes, we'll... Uh, shall we give him a couple of minutes to join us? Uh, sure. We've got a few there minutes to... Oh, there we go. She's not looking like Jack Sparrow. She says a certain wistfulness in her voice. <laughs> you had some very hot looking pirates in the uh, fantasy fair thing. Oh yes, the dancing boys now dress up good. Mm. That's for sure. <laughs> Do you want to come and join us? Alright, I got my voice on. <laughs> Get over here. Come and sit with us. I'm trying. <laughs> we can TP you if it gets to be too much of a problem. This thing will let me sit. You're in the wrong region. There, there's a split. Region oh. split. So you need Hang to walk closer to us to sit. It still won't let me. Ah, oh. there we go. Perfect. Yeah, you can sit there or you can sit on the next long seat if you prefer. The other 
Whatever she says, don't believe her. I didn't do it. <laughs> you did. <laughs> of course you did. Okay. Well, I'll... I'm innocent. <laughs> it's still short of the hour, so we'll give people a few more minutes to turn up. Okay, well, shall we, shall we make a start? Yes, that sounds good. Okay, hello everyone, and welcome to this talk in our Meet the Community season. Um, we're having a series of talks here at Second Life's 12th birthday, and we're actually going to continue um, our talks. Um, we're actually going to continue the talks um, until Sunday. The first, um, we have talks at 9 a.m. every morning, meet the non-profit. The talks then continue at, um, they used to continue at 1 p.m. with meet the Linden. That series is finished now. We have meet the designer at 3 p.m meet the artist at 4 p.m. And finally, we have meet the community at 5 p.m. And this is one of our meet the community talks. And what I'm doing is talking to a, dan a dance community at the moment. And that's really rather exciting, I think. Um, I first came across the Night Theatre when Tara Lynn, who's organized meet the uh, Meet the Artist uh, courses here, suggested that I invited them and um, Baby P to an event I organised called One Billion Rising, One Billion Rising in Second Life. And I did, and I was just blown away. They were on very late for me at 11 o'clock SLT. So it must have been even worse for you, Alva, because you're in Sweden. Yep. And they came and they danced and they just blew me away. So when I started organizing dance groups for Fantasy Fair, I asked if they could do something at Fantasy Fair too. And they volunteered to do every day. And it was just awesome because every day the sim was packed when we put the avatar numbers up, they still filled the sim. It was just incredible. And I think one of my favourite moments of Fantasy Fair was watching the uh, watching your performance there for the first time and when the Kraken came up and grabbed the pirate ship. I, I kind of IM'd Havoc Neox who built the sim and it was like whispering in someone's ear and I said did you know you have a kraken in your in your water and he said no I didn't but I'm keeping it and everyone just loved it everyone just loved what you were doing the dragons wow the flaming dragons I could go on for ages but I had better get to it all Alva, tell me about the Night Theatre, how it came together, what it is, what it does. 
Well, um, I started dancing a couple of years ago in here. Uh, I was hanging out at venues where there were a lot of dance and, and live music and so on. And um, I got, well, sucked into it, I guess. And, um, after a while, I uh, joined this uh, troupe. They were advertising for a new cor choreographer for, for um, theater dramatiques. Um, and, uh, Not too I long ago, that, it would seem, um, a man before, called Will, fed up with work and tired of responsibilities, fell asleep uh, and started to dream. But, uh, he woke, he met a teddy bear with goggles, goggles many years building younger, something strange world, while humming a clouds and moonlit skies, upon which he began to wonder. For them. And, um, it, I, in the end, uh, I ended up pretty much doing most of the work there with choreography and costume designing. and, and uh, What's uh, that? The, inquired uh, Will. It's your imagination, so replied the teddy. Uh, I'm fixing it. Thank I you, said Will, before moving well. on do my own thing and uh, I started the night theater instead and uh, I think we've been going for a year and a half now with the night theater uh, I have a couple of people on my team working with me Royal is fairly new to my team but I had seen Will walked through the dark woodland with would, cold uh, looking trees and swore he uh, was being watched team. by something nasty That's another dance troupe in here uh, they have a big show every Friday at 6 p.m. and uh, I saw a couple of his acts there and and I thought uh, when you invited me to fantasy... Friday, Welcome, Will, said Angry okay, Jack, who appeared beside him unawares. I have something to show you. Sure and with that, Angry Jack pushed Will into the tunnel of nightmares. ...that I wanted to do for the fantasy fair. Um, I've been a huge fan of the fantasy fair since um, I pretty much joined SO. It's been like my second Christmas, so... Uh, getting the opportunity to... Inside, to Will felt cold. Uh, he wanted his mummy and a hand to hold. Um, Whispers called him names, told him he was bad. Life, Things from long so ago, from nightmares he once had. Have the kind of team working with me that could handle the... Uh, could meet the demand to fit in with... Uh, but in the darkness, a hand grabbed Will's, pulling him into the light. And there stood a girl with a friendly smile. Follow me, you'll be all right. Royal was uh, uh, my first choice in getting this together. And Soon the two walked side by side over clouds until they met a boy who uh, tinkered with a giant flying toy. We can speak about a little bit later. But yeah, that's how, how I started out and I've had a couple other... All aboard, he said aloud. It's time to head above the clouds. In the troop, and we do a couple of shows every every year with a, a certain theme to them. So, are you planning on increasing the number of shows you do? Or are you so Will to... and his two new friends oh, floated up into the sky things. and gazed down into the endless space below without a concern at all for being um, up so high. It depends. Um, I uh, work very much on inspiration altogether. And, and soon enough, they dropped down onto a fluffy cloud to be greeted by other glowing nice. souls, where they played and laughed but, and hugged um, and danced proud. Just putting a choreography together can take a day or two, and, and then you need the costume. A drummer boy pointed to the sky, yourself. to the castle and the moon, he said, to the moon and beyond. Needs to fit together, because I like making shows that have um, a theme to them, so there has to be a... A red thread going so off the went Will, who led the way, uh, followed by all of his newfound like friends. But out of the ground sprang Angry Jack. Christmas. I will terrorize you to your wit's end. Fantasy fair. You want a fantasy sort of theme, a fairy tale sort of theme to everything. And As Will cowered in deep dark fear, the others together. gathered around to give him love and support to help him stand up to Angry Jack wherever uh, he may be found. With me, but it ends up being... Uh, a couple of numbers for every show and... Angry Jack began to shrink weak and small uh, as Will and his friends stood up tall. Uh, every second month is pretty much what, what 
we've managed so far. But then the drummer boy banged his drum to the castle and the moon, he said, to the moon and beyond. Then up the hill of clouds ran them all. It's been, it's a lot of work, but it's fun work. Yes, I can, I can see that. I, I'm going to ask you some more questions about how you actually choreo choreograph in Second Life, but I was wondering, well, if I can come to you, how did you get involved in Second Life? Inside the castle stood a round table oh. laden with cake, I'm and they all sat it. equal side by <laughs> but, uh, side and stuffed yeah, their mouths the, um, until their bellies ached. Uh, basically, a uh, baby pee and, uh, and I knew I could do it. It's and then the drummer boy banged his drum. To the no, moon and beyond, he said. To it, the moon and beyond. Pretty much um, easy going from there. But, I mean, it's it's fun. I mean, I, I like doing it and stuff. And I also, maybe I get to build, you know, whatever I create, interact with my um, animations and basically the surroundings. I try to use as much space as I could. I mean, I, I like dancing, basically. And... You know, I like working with Elva. She's very easy so to work Will with. climbed up the wall, and from the tip of his toes, he jumped over to the and sleepy so moon, been, you've being you've careful been not to have fall. Have you been? Um, have you been at other places as well? Have you uh, before the night theatre, or did you kind of start at Elysium and then come over to the night theatre? Um, I started dancing at Elysium. Um, I've only, I think, been dancing for, what, four, four months now? Four, five, yeah, four months. One um, by one, his friends followed. And once I mean, on the like moon, said, like Will it, looked it, up. It, and beyond, he just, said, It is a lot of work, high. like Elvis said. Up I mean, went putting into the dance sky. together. I mean, you have the timing, everything. Um, as far as the choreography uh, within the song. Uh, what's going to happen in the song? What's going to happen with your... I mean, you have to pick the, the right And together, they all ventured beyond where their imaginations it, are free I, to dream, I, I, I where friendships grow strong, that, uh, to stay young at heart, it would that seem. I adored was the comedy number, um, which was Snow White, with the dancing dwarfins. That was just hilarious. Oh, that was actually Elvis. <laughs> that, that was, I was in it, though. I was, like, almost into I, I her did, set. I did the Dragon Lord. You did the Dragon Lords, which was... The dragons, oh. yeah just amazing when that one started i i felt a kind of collective gasp go around the audience yes I thought, oh, wow <laughs> yeah it's it's um there's i mean you can pretty much do a lot of stuff i mean uh, most people are not um, familiar to like sl dancing but there's a lot you can do i mean it's different now than it was i mean you can move just basically anything you want to move and that, that, go ahead. that's interesting to me yes i i was going to ask you to what extent do you rely on animations that are already available and to what extent do you create custom animations for your dancers um that's both of you well basically you have to it depends on the, the music that you have um you have to make sure that it goes with the beat and Sometimes it can be difficult because, especially when you have a song that changes beats, um, so you have to actually make sure that you pick the right dances, and and also the set that you you know the costume. You have to make sure that your costume fits with your uh, your settings, your theme, basically. So, so Alva, when you're creating, when you're choreographing a dance. Do you use sort of animations that are out there on the marketplace or whatever, or do you you get custom animations made? Um, I buy my animations in World uh, already made, uh, and then put them together. Uh, an animation is between, or it can be as small as a bow, uh, or a, a, I think the longest ones are six, 60 seconds long. Or something like that but those are fairly new uh, and what you do is basically uh, tie together these different uh, dances you have in here and make them whole the trick is to make the transition between animation between the animations as smooth as possible so it looks like just one big one 
after the first one he stops playing wait 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 that you do i don't remember that <laughs> you don't know that <laughs> sorry okay. no i didn't yeah, know well, that <laughs> you can <laughs> yeah but yeah can you, I do, we'll go through it later <laughs> get it together but yeah it's a lot of uh, um the animations we use are motion capture ones so you have to to make those kind of animations that are smooth enough to look like proper dancing uh, you have to have the right tools and, and some sort of recording studio. So I don't know exactly how they do it. Um, Abraminations is one of my favorite places to go for animations that have really, really smooth ones. But they have studios where they record like real dancers do the moves and then you get a small pieces of it. Um, but I think... Uh, I think the the longest we have is 60 seconds so uh, and that's fairly recent that they became that long so it takes a little bit of work to make all that together i think the longest uh, one i've done is the pirate act for fantasy fair that was 11 minutes long and that and was uh, wow th that was uh, a task <laughs> to say yes the least i think i heard that pirate music um <laughs> looped uh, for a couple of days in a row all day long i can imagine and you you trying to get it out of your head was probably uh, quite tricky yeah you're going a bit nuts after a while there but that's part of the fun i guess you get to pick songs you like to start with because you're going to be playing them for a while before you're done I know that you have to like keep playing it over and over sometimes a hundred times <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> and you get so tired of the music already <laughs> <laughs> I can believe it I've done video editing with music and yeah yeah you really I, I was doing one video editing very early on in, in second um, in yeah years ago uh, and I'd been spending about two days working on something with a little tune that I thought originally was really cute but you know after two days of listening to it you just want to kind of throw it through a window and my husband came in and said oh that's a nice piece of music and I was like no it's not it's horrible yeah, but there, your music was great yeah it, it, it turned out pretty good and we, we uh Use some uh, uh, instrumental music for this, for that show too. Some uh, non-popular music, kind of. Was that a kind of new innovation for you? Uh, I don't think I've used. Usually, it's been you pick your favorite songs, you know, from the radio, YouTube, and, and you go with it. Because it sets a different kind of mood, too. especially when you're working on projects like the Fantasy Fair, that is very much um, involved in the art and, and tied to it, and it makes uh, the environment just as in a completely different way than maybe playing a Lady Gaga or Britney Spears song. It, it just wouldn't suit that environment, but 
is perfect for something else if you're doing a party show you know at some other place or like most um, weekly shows are it's more like people going out to have a nice Friday evening off and, and start it off with some good music and dancing and yeah. maybe they don't want to see the artsy ballet stuff every Friday night then but the artsy ballet stuff was just wonderful yeah, I like those bits. <laughs> Maybe a little bit too much, but that's my thing. One of the things that I found very impressive was the expressiveness of the dances that you staged. Um, so when you had uh, the Snow White one again, I mean, there was the hilariousness of the of the dwarfs actually coming out and kind of doing a complete um, village people number with, you know, disco gestures of putting there. Uh, and that was great. But there was things like the prince was kind of clumsy and tripping over his feet as he attempted to court Snow White. I thought that that kind of building a character within the dance w was fantastic. And I guess it was just by choosing very carefully your animations. Yes, um, that's. Uh, I like making it a little bit of a theater, a little bit of musical feeling to it. I mm -hmm. like. Um, I like giggling at the numbers I do. Uh, not every number is is yeah. you know a fun one, and, but mm -hmm. I can't do everything completely serious either. Mm. So uh, putting the Elvis pelvic thrusts on the dwarfins and the mm. John Travolta staying alive moves, um, yeah. that was making me giggle for uh, a couple of days pretty good. Um, it was very and, funny, uh, yes. It's about telling a story. That's why we build mm. the surroundings for it. We pick the right costumes and and then put the animations in and the movement across the stage so it all sort of fits together and, and you have a little a little musical number it's yeah. about portraying that feeling or, or whatever you want for the song I thought that was that was very clever the way that you did it and there was certainly a story I mean I felt so sorry for those poor wrecked pirates at the end of uh, the, their segment and they just floated down and were lost uh, in the mermaid's cave yeah we we killed them off pretty good at the end there we did yeah <laughs> <laughs> that was another piece of humor in, in that act because they got the 11 minutes pirate song and, and uh, yeah I thought after that they uh they got to be fish food. <laughs> it seemed a shame after they put up such a great fight against the uh, Kraken. They, they did. They were very brave. Very, very brave. They had some really good moves there, those pirates. Now, one thing... This, one of the things I, I've got a chip... A chim, and I can get my friends dancing on my chim as well. But you seem to have not just people dancing as a chorus, but multiple streams running at once that people are interacting with. So, for example, the pirates start to dance simultaneously on different levels, and then the mermaids came in. But sometimes the pirates were doing different things as part of their dancing. And that seems incredibly complicated to me. Is it all done through scripting to get them to everyone to work together? Well, kind of. We have HUDs that, that help us put together these things. Um, I can take that the an easy example is the Snow White one. Then I had the uh, Snow White had one, and the Prince had one, and then they met together somewhere in in, in the middle of things, and then they had a couple's dances. But basically, it was three different choreographies on that HUD. Um, 
because we have special hubs for it. Uh, my personal favorite is the spot on. They have a suite with different huds where they have a choreography one and they have a mover one. Movers are, are what we're using um, to make the dancers move across the stage in the patterns we want mm. uh, in different formations. There's a, a group formation HUD where you can actually move the group in different patterns, preset patterns, or you can make your own ones. Uh, I basically never use that one. Um, mm. And then you have a mover where you can, where you do one mover at the time, basically. And that's the one I usually use. Um, and then we have a HUD where you can, uh, that works kind of like your chin, but you can sort of record a sequence with it. Um, and that's what I use to make my, the base of my sequences. And then you can put together the movement system and the choreography you have in a HUD that's a performance HUD that's called a performance director. They're made by the spot on. Um, it sort of ties everything together and plays everything at the same time. Uh, so those are sort of the tools we use. There's a lot of other ones that you can use too. The Artiste is another hub that can do a lot of these things. It works both as with, with the choreography and with the movers, but that one has a lot more programming to it. So I can do a lot of different things, a little bit more than I usually do with with my stuff, but if you really love the sort thing and then the more you know putting those things together, that was perfect because it's basically limitless. You just need to add to it with, with uh, whatever ideas you have. So there's a wide market out there, but the spot on I think is it's not that old. I think it's like two years old. So it's sort of the, the, that system has sort of revolutionized the whole dancing scene with the mover systems because before you had a post wall and you danced on that post wall in the middle and you had the animations but you were standing more or less still unless you were walking yourself across the stage unless and someone drags it for you uh, yeah someone could drag it for you too <laughs> <laughs> but with, with the movers now we can direct the paths everybody move in so we can make them come in where we want and do whatever we want we can make them fly we can make them sing we can dance on the wall so it's a whole different game now and that's what it is so exciting all the work is preparing it and setting everything up uh, in the order you want with dances and, and the movement and the, there's a costume uh, hard too that helps you put on and take off um, clothing items through uh, our thing um, and that's another great tool for either changing costumes or adding particles or whatever so it's a grand it, the sky's the limit whatever you can think of you can pretty much accomplish nice. and that's what Royal is so good at she can use all these aspects and he also knows how to animate uh, parts of his sets so they work together with all of this other stuff he's a great roller uh, anybody who wants to see his work can, can check he has it all in his profile you can check his pics of him he has links to videos of different acts in there and you can really see it's pretty much taking the, this game up a notch which which is one of the is why I really want him to come along with this because he's really um, taking everything to the next level with this uh, mm. making all these different aspects work together I, I was so impressed yes that's one of the things that, that was so amazing about fantasy fair was the way that you integrated um, particles and um, and the dancing and the set you also contained it within that ball that you you kind of were able to do set changes out of sight there 
and yep. then take the ball away. Does that help you to synchronize? You had some kind of in between music as well. Does that help you to get everything synchronized so that you can leave it till you're utterly ready to go? Um, yes, uh, we usually do the song so we have between and then the next act and that song in between allows us to change sets, the scenery, mm. uh, which of course being ESO we need time for it to rest for everybody so the textures are rest and everything. If everybody to see grey blobs on the stage it's not going to make a much right. impression, you know. Um, and also it gives us time to preload the animations um the costume so you don't get out on stage and you're all gray um mm. particles you can preload at that time during that song you have three or four minutes to make everything rest for the viewer so they have a chance to see everything the way you want it to be seen and play it perfectly with everything rest and all the animations in the sequence if the animations are uh, not rest starts if the, the avatar will stand still until the animation is loaded which would mean that you have a piece of dance and then a stop and a piece of dance and then a stop and that's not much of a flowing choreography you know so that's why you load the animations before um, yeah so that's why we have the breaks in between so everything gets to be rest and we can present uh, an act that goes with the considered costume changes for the 